starts. You sure? You ready? Yep. You're all right. <laughs> Hi, this is Laura with Rethink Junk by Laura. Thursdays at three ish. Thank you so much for joining us. Or thank you ahead of time if you haven't joined us yet. We should have a couple people because we're running late, and we're so sorry about that. It's slow. We'll give it a minute. It takes a second after we start for it to just give it a second. It's um, live like a couple seconds later. There you go. Not quite live. Yeah, not quite live. Right. Um. So but we're Suzette getting... Bowman says hello. Hey, Suzette. Thank you for being a part of things. All right. Suzette we're... Bowman. How do you get on to Facebook? That <laughs> is it not coming up for Dad. No, he doesn't know how to work it. I don't either, though, oh. so. You oh, there it is, Okay, there you go. Yay! You Yay. have a hi from Round Rock, Texas. That's Hey, cool. Texas! You have a wavy emoji from Karen Stick Me. Hey, Karen. And a hi there from Didi St. Peter. Hey, Didi. Okay, let me start real quick with, um... Sorry. <laughs> I wanted to do a thank you real quick, and sorry I didn't know it would hit me like this. Um, I didn't put it on my Rethunk Junk page because I'm trying to do separation of business and personal and be a little professional, which why would I have ever tried to be professional and it's never happened in the past, right? Um, but on my personal Facebook page I posted this week um, about my niece, sorry, <laughs> who um, had a brain bleed. It was a terrible problem, and her brother, her older brother, um, she went from being a high school senior who was getting ready to go with a full scholarship to college and all kinds of stuff to not being able to talk or walk or eat or read or anything and she needs some serious rehabilitation that insurance does not cover. Her brother put together a GoFundMe page and um, presented their story and it was really, really sweet. This is Lauren right here. And I posted it on my page thinking maybe one or two family members way far away from us somewhere would hear about it, see about it, and maybe donate $5. And I'm sure I have missed some people, but you guys have amazed me. Um, sorry again. Okay. Just wanted to do what? I'm sorry. <clears throat> Why? Because what? Nothing. Go ahead. Sorry. Just wanted to say thank you to Denise, Linda, Jamie, Bernadette, Sherry, Kathy, Susan, Laura Rodriguez, Wendy, Lisa, Diana St. Peter, Michelle McBride, Clyda, Denise Milligan, and probably a bunch of other people that I missed who were sweet enough to respond um, and to, to donate. And I just wanted to say thank you. If you feel like looking forward, it's on my personal page, but I really did just want to say thank you to them and thank you for all the people who are praying. It means a whole, whole lot to us. All right, so that part's over. Sorry. Whew. Okay, this week... Thursday at three winners. Okay, this is awesome. Thursday at three winners. First we have Marianne Stewart. This cracked me up. Would you like to see what Marianne did? You want the hellos first? Sandals! <laughs> is that not awesome? Before, after. Isn't that hilarious and fabulous? That's a great idea. I know, that's a first, them, yeah. right? So you've got a $35 credit put in the notes section that you won the customer creations um, Thursday at three, and you got a thirty-five dollar credit. So that was that was hilarious. It made me smile. And you have more hellos from Chris, Nancy, Angie, Sarah says I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, we love you, Laura, and thank you, pray thank for you. your family. Hello That's from awesome. Utah. Hello, Hello from D D Ryder, Los Angeles. Is that what LA is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm not. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's the state or the oh, city. Oh yeah. So. Well, hello to both. You know, hello from way. Kentucky. <clears throat> Hi from between Georgia. All right. We ready for another winner? Mm -hmm. We got three winners this week because there were three awesome. Pro well, there were a ton of awesome projects. It's always so hard for me to decide. Kim Casey. This is her first project. She did her front door and the trim around it. Oh, I've never seen the trim around it painted. The, Isn't that that's beautiful? Cool. Yeah. yeah, really, really cool. Makes it pop because it's not the same color as the siding and everything. Looks yeah, really, I like really good. That. Yeah, I haven't seen that before. So, Kim, great job. Put in the notes section next time you order that you got a $35 credit. We'll be going $35. And our last one is Charlene Richens. This is her first glaze project. We're going to show you. Here's her before table. And I love that she saw potential there. A lot of people would not have. That's the whole purpose of Rethunk Junk, to see something like that and go, yes, I can make it fabulous. And here is her finished project. And you can see on the sides and on There's the a legs. On the lights there. Oh, sorry. There you go. You can see that she did a glaze. And this was her first glaze project. Oh, she did two colors? She is did stain a... top in the middle and then mixed a couple colors to come up with the paint color that she used and then glazed cool. over the paint color. Yeah, it is really cool. The before and after are amazing. So, Charlene, you also have a credit. Now, these people are retailers, 
and retailers can't win the $35, but it occurred to me the other day that some of you may be missing some fabulous projects and ideas just because I'm not putting them on here because they're not retailers, I mean because they're retailers. So we're doing some shout outs. This is Nancy Bradley. Look at the before table. There's a flare again. There you go. Sorry. Before table? Uh-huh. Now look what we've got after. Ooh. I know, right? Isn't it fabulous? Very different. Exactly. Totally, totally awesome. Looks great, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then this one is beautiful. This is Gretchen Moore did this one, and it is phenomenal looking. Let me find it real quick. Um, must be distraction. Sorry, just one thing. It is, yes, right here. I'll turn it around as soon as it flips. Okay. Look how beautiful. Ooh, what color is that? Patriot. Really? Mm-hmm. And the top is dark walnut, same top. Isn't that classy looking? Very. Yes. I'm not normally a fan of Patriot, but that's pretty. That he does make you like Patriot, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? I'm the same way. Gretchen, great job. That's absolutely beautiful. And the last one, this is a blast from the past, but every time I see it, I am absolutely floored. Oh, that's gonna be really a funny joke when you see what I'm gonna show you. Okay, Lauren, <laughs> Laura Mullen. This is her bathroom floor. She has, Tom, you'll be interested. She did this. She put five coats of tough top on it. It's been a year and she said it looks perfect. So there's her floor. Awesome. Would you like to see what she did? You're all going to not like her. Oh my goodness. Where's all the hearts? <laughs> Look at that. That's insane. Totally insane. And must have took forever. And must have. And you know what? I'm just thinking here. I don't think she is a retailer. So Laura, if you want to place an order, we'll give you $35 credit. That is just insane. And a year later, it looks like... Let's do this one again. Ready? Oh, look. That's a sad bathroom floor. We're so sorry. Wait a minute. Refund junk. And Laura. Not me, Laura. Her Laura. Ta-da! Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. That's and if I remember from reading about it a year ago, I think she made her own stencil. So those of you that were still kind of liking her, now you really don't like her, right? That's <laughs> way too much talent in one woman. So beautiful, beautiful job. This week... How we, come, how come our potties don't look that white? You gotta clean them, babe. Gotta clean them. Oh, that ain't mm -hmm. worth it. It ain't worth it. I know, right? Okay, so this week, um, do you want me to, where are... Probably. Where are the containers of the color, of the white sage? Or do you want to walk out there and show the pieces? Um, I mean, we, no. I can go get the color. You want to go get the show. colors? Yeah. Okay. Run, Forrest, run! Yeah. This is me running. Okay. <laughs> He's running. We have a new color we're introducing. Um, limited edition and it was you should all put hearts up there even if you don't like it because it is insanely hard to find the color oh where's my little where's my little round board I think it's in your office is it in next, there yeah okay I'll we'll make Tom get that after he gets back <laughs> with the other thing he's getting it's insanely hard to come up with a neutral that is not already looking like linen or looking like cotton or looking like you know whatever so coming up with a new neutral because neutrals are fabulous they're what everybody loves they're what feels safe they're what most of us use for our retailers out there that's what sells the best so coming up with a new neutral is hard coming up with a husband who can hurry is hard um, but we <laughs> did find a neutral that we really really like um, that will be available as of Monday whatever day that is Monday the what what is Monday What's Monday? Day before date. Tuesday. That's funny. Ooh, I'm going to open this one because it's bigger. Okay. Oh, and they brought the Thank you. Yeah, okay. Lizzie we'll show you that in a minute. Thank you, Liz. Oh, Liz, you're me. awesome. Oh, Liz, you're fabulous. Oh, yeah. really okay. That you that, yes, she did. Thank you, Liz. That's painted with white sage. That's what we're calling it. This is painted with white sage. Here's the actual paint color. And for those of you who are saying, that's just like, no, it's not. Okay. This is white sage. I even had somebody say, it's just like spring meadow. It's not like spring meadow. It has a hint of a green to it, but you can see here when you put it on something, you don't see green. I, mean, I there's never, a green I tone to it. Background. It's, like it's definitely enough. not sandstone. It's not linen. It's not oyster and it's not fog. It's white sage. You will absolutely love it. We've done a desk and a cedar chest in it that we'll post pictures of soon. But it is a beautiful neutral. Looks great stain topped. Lindsay did the desk and stain topped it with the weathered gray. Absolutely gorgeous. I think it would be great with the darker stain tops too. It is a beautiful, beautiful color. It will be available on Monday. So, there's that. Hearts. You're getting lots of hearts. Love it's, it. Pretty. You should probably tell people love why it. your arm looks like you have a disease. What? What? Your band-aid. I got bit by something and it hurt. Hurt the husband. Not. <laughs> okay. 
Are you gagging? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe. Okay, here we go. This is what we're doing this week. We said stain top and glaze. Because there are people that still stress about glaze a little bit. So, we'll start with glaze and then we'll move on to stain top. Okay. Do you want to say hi or answer questions or anything? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we don't have questions, questions yet. But oh, okay. Great to say hi. Yes, Tom, go for it. Well, but lots of people love your white sage. Good, 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 good. Uh, but of course I told them to put hearts up there even if they didn't because it's so hard to find one. Everything looks like, oh, that's too similar to, oh, that's too... It was great to find something that wasn't. Okay. For glazing, you need... They complemented your idea with putting them all on the board to show the difference between each color. Good, good, good. It does help. I mean, I had to do that. I did that for y'all, but I had to do it for me too. Because you, it's surprising. I'll pick something that I think is so different from everything we've got. Get back and I'm like, well, dang it, it might as well be linen. Or dang it, it might as well be. And I'll mix and mix and mix and think I've come up with something fabulous. And it's like, oh, that's cotton or, you know, whatever. So you need dark glaze, a brush, and a damp rag. And you're wringing the rag out really, really well. So no a more water rag. can come out. A wet rag with all the water wrung out. Is there really no other way you can say that? No, you can say that word if you want to. It sounds like a cuss word to tell me. A damp rag. How's that? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I'll do the pop at the end. All right. Okay, so we're going to glaze the front of this. First of all, Katie, show them the before, the whole before piece. That's what we started with. And then we painted it linen. We're going to stain top it in a minute. In a minute. And then you can see where we've glazed and where we haven't. I did not even distress this because when you're glazing, sometimes distressing isn't even necessary. You can just get the glaze in those cracks and it's fabulous. Oh, we do have a question. Yeah. Question. I don't know if I can reach it. You think? Yeah. Okay, put it up there. Um, What's the question while Dad's putting that up there? Uh-huh. Sorry. People, now, this is the part where people are like, you're making us sick. <laughs> um, how do you tell down here. I'll if talk to you and I can put it here. real wood or laminate? Oh, that's one for you, Tom. Yeah. While you move that thing, answer it. How do you tell if something's real wood or laminate? All right. Wait, while you're multitask, pretend you're a woman. He's horrible at multitask. He's going to move it and then answer the question. I know. That thing is heavy. Which All does right. not mean, oddly enough, that it's real wood. A lot of times the heavier pieces are the... MDF stuff, the squished together and glued together sawdust stuff, they can be heavier than real wood. Yeah, so to answer... Because there's a lot of people that do that. Oh, that's heavy. It must be real wood. Not necessarily. So to answer your question, I'm going to make... Uh, I'm going to explain there's three kinds of wood. There is solid wood, where wood goes all the way through. There is veneer, which is what this is. It has a veneer on top that's very, very thin. You can't tell. And it is put on an HDF backing. And what that means is that these, they get this better inlay by putting veneers on here. Still pretty, still beautiful. And then there is laminate. And laminate, that's probably what you're trying to talk about. Laminate is more like formica. So you know it because it's, it's the stuff that's hard as a rock. It's stuff on your kitchen table, old kitchen tables. It it's looks, on the top of a lot of old French provincial pieces, right? The French provincial pieces yeah. and desks, it's on the top of a lot of those. Yeah. It, Where it looks kind of plasticky and shiny, but it's insanely durable yeah but if you're talking about this one the only problem with one of these is it's the reason we develop stain top these veneers are so thin that if you try to sand this off to change the color you will sand through it and what's below it has no texture and so you'll have spots that look orange or look he did stain clear. top because i'm not sure how many dining tables i got almost all the way through because he's like can you just sand that gently because we don't know i'd get almost through and sand through the veneer on top and be in tears for like a week so stain top basically was developed to make me quit crying. Yeah. At so. that point you have to just paint it. So yeah. that's why stain top. And even that, the texture is different once you sand through that veneer. Absolutely. The, it, the texture and the paint doesn't even sometimes combine the two textures. You have so. a big orange or yellow spot, no matter what you did. So. All right. We're going to blaze. Did you want this turned around so you could start all over? Again? Am I crazy or is the paint thicker than it used to be? New can spot last month seemed thick and not leaving out as much as compared to cans from two years ago. Not leaving out. I don't know what that means. Um, leveling. I read it wrong. Oh, not leveling if, out as much. If you ever get a can that's a little bit thick, everything we do is water-based. Just put a little bit of water in it, stir it up or shake it up, and you'll be fine. Um, sometimes, depending on temperature, things like that, they can be a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner. Um, but yeah, just put a little bit of water in it and you're good to go. And it won't affect the paint. 
Um, and same Sandy who asked the question about the how do you tell if it's real world laminate, can you stain them all? Absolutely. Yes. That's why we developed stain top. So you don't have to sand, you can just put that stain right on top of the veneer and not. That's what we're getting ready to do with the top of this one in just a minute. Veneer once we and laminate and real wood, yes. everything. You cannot put real stain, regular stain, on top of a laminate um, because it won't, it, it can't absorb. Ours you can because ours actually levels and sits on top. So that's the difference. I'm not going to apply much more than that because I want time to play around with it, that kind of thing. Taking the rag. This is a good example of what you don't want to do. If a section like this, you don't want to let it dry until you've got the whole section done. I stopped here because I was doing the halfway, and you can see where I stopped, right in here. So you don't want to do that. I can probably end up feathering it in, but when you're doing it, do it a section at a time and stop at a point where stopping is okay. I'm kind of erasing it from this solid part in here because I want it to really show up in the cracks in here and in here. See how it just goes in those cracks and looks fabulous? And I'm just gently wiping with my rag. I'm not brushing real hard. I'm not squishing real hard. I'm just gently, gently rubbing. And it just sticks in all those spots and totally gives it a completely different look. So I'm doing it down here. Oh, I had somebody send a picture in the other day. This reminds me. And she had one of those um, tables that has the claw and then the ball under here. Yeah. <laughs> Not me, this. Okay? It was awesome. I actually had a piece like that. I've had a couple and Tom's made fun of me because I have actually given them pedicures. I'll like put pink flamingo, flamingo um, pink toenails on them. She did something I had never thought of that was really cool. She painted the ball a like the same top like it was on top. So you could see the architecture around it and then the ball was a different color underneath. It was very, very cool. You gotta try it. Okay, so... Let's um, do this little section up here. Yep, questions? Does the paint, would this paint and glaze work for kitchen cabinet remodels? Definitely, definitely does. We have several professional, more than several, we have professional cabinet maker or cabinet painters that use it. We have people that have become professional cabinet painters because they love the product and it works so well. So yes, it can. Put your first coat of paint, scrub, scrub, scrub with the prep. We have, you can use a green scrubby pad or we sell scrubby pads on our website that work great. And uh, clean it twice with the prep and scrub with that green scrubby. And then put the paint on. First coat should be very, very thin. After that, you're ready for your second coat when it's really, really dry. Oh, look, see the glaze? And I'm getting it out of the little sections right here because I want you to really see, I want to really see the architecture right up in there. See how fabulous um, that looks? It's a Charlie Brown strip. Is it the glaze or the stain that can be mixed with the paint? Do you want that? Is it the glaze or the stain that can be mixed with the paint? I don't know that I would do either of those with mixing with paint. You can layer the products. Um, anything can be mixed that we do. Anything can be mixed. But um, it just depends on the outcome you're trying to get. So if you wanted to darken it, certainly you could put a little dark glaze in there or a little stain top. The stain top would thin it some, the dark glaze wouldn't. Um, so, but we don't, we usually it only thin with water and that kind of thing. And if we're changing the color in the paint, we usually use another paint color, but you can certainly do it. Everything works together. Everything, nothing's not compatible. So look, Katie, right here where we've applied the glaze. Go close up. Way, way cool. And now close up right here where we haven't. Very, very cool with the glaze on it. Yeah. Very, very cool. Difference. Yep, we're going to do this side one more time so you see the whole process. Then we're going to do some stains um, on Where can I order your stain? Check and see if there's a retailer, retailer near you. Go on our website and there's a spot that says retailer near you or find a retailer or something. Look there and if there's nobody near, because we like you to buy from our retailers. Um, you develop a relationship with them. You can see everything in person, blah, blah. And then if there's not, you can order online on our website, www.rethunkjokebylaura.com. Okay, and on here, I'm going to do this again. Did you also, so let me show you that in a minute. And do you need to sand? No, we did not sand anything. It's fact, most people... Um, and I think the that sand have problems. You think what? Oh wait, I don't know. Did you get another question? Uh, for uh, it's the same lady that asked about the kitchen cabinet. I just scroll through to make sure it's the uh -huh. same person. So do you need to sand your kitchen cabinets or no, anything before you? No, you don't sand your kitchen cabinets. No, you clean really well with that scrubby and the prep. Clean twice. The prep takes everything off the cabinets. It also softens the finish. The reason you're hearing us say about a green a scrubby pad is once you do that while it's still on there, if you just go over it lightly, we're not talking scrubbing, we're talking just kind of go over it really quickly, 
it'll degloss them and get them ready for even better for the paint. So that's what it is. The green scrub is really just taking everything off, including the finish, and making it deglossy. Um, do you use water to wash out your stain brush? Yes, Absolutely. everything we do is water-based, soap and water cleanup for everything. What I was showing you is it's not fully blended here, but I did this side here, the before side, probably a half an hour ago, would you say? Okay. Maybe an hour ago. But if you've got your damp rag and if you come back and you see a problem, there's a period of time where you can still make some changes. Watch real close, Katie. But this is the side I already did. And I am, it's hard to tell, but I, you can erase a lot of it in there. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got some play time. Then if I want them to be more even, I'm just using my brush again. This was the only spot that bothered me because I felt like there was um, a difference in the two sides. Yes, ma'am. So there we found it. Do over this side above? Yeah, it is. Do what? Do you glaze over all the project, even the smooth part? You well, what I'm doing is rubbing more of it off on the smooth part, but that is totally personal preference. You can um, you can skip that part or. I, my problem is, let me start on this side and show you an example. And Johnny Williams wants to know if you're using stain top over the paint. If I'm using stain top over the, if you can use stain top over the paint, you can. No, if you are. No, I'm using the glaze. You can use the stain top over the paint, and we have lots of people that do that. You just have less play time. So if I'm doing this and I don't want to glaze that, but, or like I just want to glaze this part, my problem is sometimes I will be impatient and not want to just paint this part so that's why I did what I did on the other side I'll show you that in a minute but what, let's pretend we just want to glaze here and nowhere else you just be careful with your brush and just apply it in the area you want so that the other is still clear but see my rag will get a little now you can come back in with the other color with the color of paint you used and paint right there and touch that up so you can just do what you want you don't have to do the whole entire piece you're getting so lots there. of compliments on how we have, the piece looks with oh the good. glaze. Yay. It just highlights all the architecture. You don't see it without the glaze. You really, I mean, um, you really don't. Are you using a particular brush to apply the glaze? Does it matter? And do you always want to use a brush and not anything else? Okay, great question. The brushes we love the best are the ones we sell. <laughs> but you can use any normal brush. This is one of those cases where, hang tight, just one minute, Katie, where you would not want to use a chip brush, which is one of these. The hairs fall out, and I don't like picking the hairs out when I've done it. So you wouldn't want to use one of these for glaze. You could if you're patient and you want to pick the hairs out. Um, so just any decent bristle brush will work. As far as is that the only thing you can use, after a while, if I'm doing a big project and I'm glazing the whole thing, my rag's going to have enough glaze in it. I don't think this one does yet, where I can just... See, it doesn't have enough yet, but after a while, it'll. sometimes I'll just rinse my rag out. The reason I use the brush is I feel like I have control over where I put it, but you'll develop a system that works for you. If there are people on here that glaze all the time, everybody's going to have a different answer. They'll all offer you some different advice because you find out what works for you and get happy with that and roll with it. So you can add tough top to the glaze, which will cut the color a little bit so it's not as dark if you want to really lightly glaze something, and then you're glazing and sealing at the same time. So you can see I'm just playing with it and... And, and I'm not trying to be crazy about it, but the glaze is fabulous and I really do truly care and really do truly not understand the people that call and say I'm glazing and all the paint's pulling off. That probably means you haven't waited long enough. Um, but we just, we did paint this yesterday. We didn't paint it today. So we did paint it yesterday before we started putting glaze on. But the glaze is just really fabulous and easy to use. We also have a tenable. For those of you who are new which means you would take it's kind of a clear glaze and you add whatever paint you want to it and it's and it's fabulous so um but say way easy to use uh, no paints pulling off and it just goes in all those cracks and looks awesome like right here you can totally see all those ridges right here you lose them and you can distress but you, maybe you don't always want the distress look so there you go we put it on the ground and let's do a little stain top tom I have this table, two of them. Also, I also just transformed the matching coffee table to an ottoman. Oh, really? Our matching coffee table's right there. Move the thing there, Tom. We have local lights yeah. that are in my way. I'm going to show that. You are. You can sneak around that side. Now give time, Dad time to put this on the floor.
Well, first I have to wait for him to move all the lights. All right, we're putting the stain top on the top now. And, okay, you want to go out there and show them? Talk all about it, Katie. I don't know how to talk about it. Tell them how beautiful this. That's all you got to say. Look how beautiful this is. Yeah, don't knock over my water or my other. Sorry, I'm in the middle of flooding. This glass is fine. Yeah, talk about it, Katie. I can't talk about it. Okay. I just show this. Where's that go? I'm not going to get you. Where's that go? Wait, let me. Was this white the sage white? No, this is not. If we thought about it, we would have done that. That would have been smart, huh? But... This was linen. We did not. Yeah, this is linen. Okay, we're going to... I don't know if Lindsay did, so we're going to prep first. For the tenable glaze, do you always use a totally different color or sometimes the same color as what is underneath to add... You know, I had somebody ask me that once. Like, I painted a piece in driftwood, and she's like, would you ever glaze in driftwood? And I'm like... Uh, no. And then I thought, you know what? So many times you guys know way better than I do. So I did, and it actually added some dimension. It was really cool. So you can use the same color to glaze with. It's very subtle, but it adds some dimension and it's neat. All right. So if you have painted first, which you'll see why there's actually a process here. Uh, Lindsay painted first. And she got paint on here. Don't sand it off. Use the prep. It gets the paint off so that you're ready for okay, stain to top. Yeah, please. Don't get down my shirt. It's a scary place. Huh. All right. It's now, a wondrous place. It's not a wondrous place. It's frightening. It's a wondrous oh, place. I don't know if Lindsay did prep or not. I'm going to go with or not. All right. This one we chose because it has all this woodwork and we don't want to cover it up. And we chose it because a lot of times the questions we get are, how do you put the stain top on a piece like this? Just tuning in, using, ah, things keep growing. Using your products this weekend for the first time, how long to wait between prep and paint and coats and so forth? Prep it, then paint. You don't have to wait. Wait till it's dry. Well, yeah, but you don't have to wait. And then between coats, we have a lot of people that say they wait about a day. You don't have to. Thin, thin first coat if this is your first time doing it. First coat should be thin and look stupid. If it doesn't look stupid, you're not doing something right. And then um, when it's really dry, and it completely depends on the humidity in your area. Is it raining that day? Is it cold where you are? Whatever. Where are you outside? Are you inside? Um, but wait till that first coat's good and dry and then you can put a second coat on. And then, what do you think? Wait overnight for you? Stuff top? Yeah, probably. But you, uh, but Laura, just to give you an idea, when we're painting, Laura never waits more than 30 minutes. No, but you always fuss at me because when I say that and then yeah. somebody else says it. So if you just, once it's dry to the touch, uh, if you put a thin coat on there, once it's dry to the touch, you might even scratch it a little bit just to make sure it's here, then go for it. You don't you don't have to do the weight the day and all that nonsense. Is this dark glaze? I had to take a call. This is not dark glaze, this is stain top. But so you did use the dark glaze on I used the dark one. I mean, I used the glaze when I was glazing. This is stain top. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get this, and I'm not caring about the edges because I can go back and paint the edges. I want the top to look really nice. So I'm going back like this. Okay, and I have that fabulous star thing on there, and we don't want it to look stupid. So I'm going to come in with a smaller brush. I don't think it needs to be much longer than this. And we're going to go in the direction of the wood. And you don't have to be real precise, but see how it's already getting rid of brush strokes that would have bothered us otherwise. And I'm just going straight into the middle there. What color stain top? This is dark walnut. And it makes, see right here we've got this line going across here. Now we don't. So just follow the grain of whatever your pattern is. There's a lot of things out here there that have really cool stuff on them. And you just want to... Alright. Fabulous. When that dries, we'll put another coat on and do the exact same thing. 
Um, when we did the one in the hall, it got to the point where we didn't want to put more dark walnut on it. Maybe what I did there was reverse. Lynn's did, she probably started with Raven Black. It was not dark enough for her, but she didn't want to put a million more coats and lose the color. So her last coat she put on was actually Raven Black. You can combine them, you can layer them. It's really fun to play with them. All right, any questions about the same top? Because that's literally what we're going to do for the next coat, and then we would tough top it. Any questions about that? Because that was way easy. Way easy. No questions? No questions. Okay, far. great. Then, see if you look at it from over here, it's going to be really pretty when it's done. Well, if you look at the one in the hall, it's gorgeous. And it is already darker than the one next yes, to it. Yes, it is. And covers up a whole bunch of those little scratches and weird places. And the more coats you put on, the darker it gets. You don't want to go so dark that you lose the wood grain. But the more coats you put on, the darker it gets, and the more it covers all those little imperfections. So. Um, you don't use a damp cloth and wipe it off? No, 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 no. You don't want to. No. That's with the glaze. That's when I was using the glaze. I used the brush and the... I didn't know. Sorry. <laughs> you want to use the brush and the damp rag if you're glazing. Not with the same top. You just want to leave it. Any other questions? It's self-leveled. It does self-level. It looks beautiful. I mean, you saw it. That's exactly what we did to the one out there, and it's absolutely beautiful, and no little pockets of anything. And Katie's tired. She's yawning. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up really early because when Megan and Emma left your house, they came to our house and woke me up so they could come, like, and We could just get rid of Matthew for a couple it. days. You and I would have several days just all on our own. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be great? So, thank you so much for joining in. We really appreciate it. If you have any questions, post them here and we will answer them. The new color, White Sage, comes out on Monday. And um, thank you again to those of you who donated to the GoFundMe page for Lauren. Yes. I have a comment real quick. Yes. Is there a way to overlay a color on the top of these tops to add color? Yeah, um, like it would look lovely with the blue or gray cast. Yes. <laughs> Soon. Funnily opportunity. Yes. Like, don't, don't tell everything. Just Before long, there will be. We've got some new products we're really excited about coming out that are like in the wash family, and you would brush those on much like you did stain top, and they have just a very see through type color to them. It's going to be way awesome when we introduce those. We don't have a time frame yet, but they're they're getting there. We're, we're pretty close to launching those too. So, and that would be a perfect thing to give, like one of the colors we're coming out with is like sea glass and it would be a really pretty cool color on top of there. So, and you can layer those with the stain tops and play around with them and they're gonna be awesome. So, yes, to answer your question, yes, not yet, but yes. Um, right now, it would be trickier to do, but I guess you could water down the paint. It work. No, it wouldn't work the same. You can play around with it, but you know, don't call us if it doesn't turn out. So. <laughs> all right, great question though. All right, if there's no more questions, thank you so much. Truly appreciate all of you. Thank you for posting all the pictures you do. It's inspirational and awesome. Happy rethunking. What did you put in the oh, top? Sorry, what last what? question. <laughs> what it popped up right at the end. What did you put uh, on the top? On the top is stain top. Our dark walnut stain top. And I'm going to put raven black also, but our dark walnut stain top. Just brushed it on. All right. Thank you, thank you. Happy rethunking.